Once upon a time, in a faraway place, there lived a young boy. And that time was the 1980s. That faraway place was Australia. And that young boy was me. And the thing that I loved to do more than anything else in the whole world was watch cartoon shows. Now, in the 1980s in Australia, televisions looked like this. This was the ultimate height of technology. It had three channels, and you went right up to the front and turned it on with a click. And every day after school, between the hours of 4 and 5 p.m., was when the best cartoon shows were on. So I had a routine. I would rush home, throw my school bag in my room, and sit as close as possible to the TV screen. And there, for one full hour, I'd be enamoured with all the adventures of people like Voltron and the Thundercats, and my favourite of all, He-Man, the yeah. master of the universe. Unfortunately, at about 4.55pm, I would see behind me the silhouette of my dad starting to tower over me. He'd be standing there, and in his arm would be the remote control for the TV. Now, back then, remote controls looked different than they do today. They were these big, clunky plastic things with only a couple of buttons, the power button and the change channel button. And I'd stand there and say, Dad, wait, it's my favourite show. There's only five minutes left. Please, just wait. And he'd look over me and say, Son, you know the rules. Whoever has the remote control has the power. <laughs> Click. And I'd watch in horror as He-Man would turn into the nightly news. And then I'd storm off to my room and I'd sit there and sulk. And I'd swear that one day, one day I'd get control of that remote and I would have the power. Now, I don't know if any of you felt the same way as a kid, where you felt like your parents were towering over you, pressing your buttons and telling you what to do. It's pretty frustrating. It's pretty annoying. And as you grow into a teenager, you start to have these different ambitions, these desires, these things that you want to do with your life. What's funny, I've noticed, is when you're a really little kid and you tell someone that you want to be an astronaut or a famous actor or a superstar in some way, they say, that's great, go for it, dream big, you can do whatever you want to do. But when you say the same type of things when you're about 15, 16 years old, they start to say things like this. Stop dreaming, be responsible. Be realistic. It's time to get sensible. And what I realized is that around the age of 15, 16, is when we start to experience a different type of remote control. Another word for it might be conformity. It's that desire that other people around us have to make us be like them. They don't understand our desires and our dreams and what we want to be. And for me, around the age of 15, I started to get this crazy idea in my head that I wanted to be a motivational speaker. I used to listen to these old school cassette tapes that some of you might remember on my Sony Walkman. And I'd sit there and I'd dream one day that I'd stand in front of a crowd and tell them all what to do. But of course, as I got older, everyone started to tell me opposite. You can't do that. That's not realistic. You need to get a job and go to college and be sensible. And so I started to give up on that dream and conform and be like everybody else. And what I've realized is that this remote control of conformity is part of all of our lives in different ways. And I have three different things that I want to share with you today that will help you, hopefully, to break free of that remote control, that desire to conform and be like everybody else. And the first one that I've noticed is this need we all have to be liked. Every single one of us grew up in a family. And the one thing we have in common is that we didn't get to choose our parents. We all grew up somewhere. We were told to do things. We were told which school to go to. We were probably even given our friends and our social group at a young age. And very often we get so used to that that we just start to fit in. We don't think about it anymore. And what happens is that we start to have this compulsion, this desire to be liked by the people around us. And that's all well and good as long as the people you're around are what are like you want to be in the future. And what I noticed was that because I had this desire to be a speaker, nobody around me was a speaker. Nobody knew how to do that. So they all said to me, that's a mistake. That would be dangerous. That would be a risk. Don't do it. 
Because they loved me, they wanted to stop me being what I wanted to be. They were fearful that I would fail. And funnily enough, this need to be liked slowly starts to remote control who we are. What I have learned is that very often, if you go to the people who have or are what you want, they're very open and very willing to help you. And it's well within your power at any age, especially today, to reach out to people who are in the same field or have the same ambitions as you and partner with them in becoming who you want to be. It doesn't mean that you have to give up your friends or family. It doesn't mean that you love them any less. But maybe you need to find people who won't remote control you in the same way. The second one, the second type of remote control that I've noticed is entertainment. What do I mean by this? In the 1980s, as I said, I had a TV that had three channels. And we had weather, sports, and news. On the weekend, sometimes we'd go to the video store and get a video and we'd watch that. And that was very exciting. Now today, as we all know, we have unlimited entertainment, 24-7, 365. We have online streaming, we have gaming, we have virtual reality, all these things that can entertain us endlessly. Now don't worry, this isn't going to be one of those talks where I say, put down your phone and talk to someone. I don't mean that. What I mean is to consider that entertainment has a side effect. When you use entertainment too much in your life, it makes you passive. If you have a hero in your life, someone who you admire, whether it's a famous actor or a musician or a business person, a philanthropist, someone who is doing something and changing the world, I guarantee you that they are not passive. They are not sitting there get, taking things in from other people. They are giving out to the world. And what I've noticed is that entertainment at a certain age starts to take over your life and you become a consumer instead of a creator. So it's very easy to fall into this pattern of feeling like I'm involved because I'm liking and commenting and I'm sharing. But actually what you're doing is consuming other people's creations instead of being out there creating something for yourself. Now the good side of this is all the technology we have, it gives you a vehicle to be a creator, to connect with people and to contribute to the world. So I encourage you to think about entertainment in that way. And it doesn't matter what age you are, it can remote control you if you use too much of it. It makes you passive. The third type of remote control is probably the most difficult. And this is fear. Now all of us know exactly what it feels like to be afraid. In fact, just before I came on this stage, I was nervous. And I've noticed in my life there are two types of fears. First of all, there are what I call micro fears. They're the small fears that you have, those pangs of hesitation. Your heart starts pounding, a little bit of sweat comes down your forehead, and you're shaking. But strangely enough, with micro fears, when you step forward and do something, they go away. On the other side of the spectrum, you have what I call macro fears. They're the big fears that can take over your life. And they're the things that we tend to learn through the values of our family and friends, through entertainment, where we start to think differently about ourselves and the world. We think, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I don't have what it takes. I don't know if I should try. And those macro fears freeze you from the inside. They remote control you just by creating this fiction about who you are. But what I've noticed is, if you spend enough time facing micro fears, if you keep stepping forward and trying things in your life, pushing yourself forward, strangely, the bigger fears start to disappear. They no longer have that control over you that they once did. When I was 15, I had an ambition to be a motivational speaker. But as I said, the people around me, my internal fears and distractions got the better of me. And so I went to college, I got a job, and I settled down. I lived a pretty good life and made good money. I had a lot of entertainment, a lot of good friends. But about the age of 35, I woke up one day and I thought, you know what, Daniel? You're living your life, but you don't feel alive. Something is missing right here. And it made me think back to that time when I was 15 and I used to listen to my motivational tapes and I used to write little speeches, but I never did anything with it. So at the age of 35, I decided it was time to break free of that remote control. And I started joining speaking groups and writing speeches. And the first speech that I ever delivered was to three people. <laughs> and nobody cared. 
and then to five people, and then to ten people, and to twenty people. And after several years, I had the chance to speak in front of 50 people, 200 people. And finally, one time I got a chance to speak in front of a thousand people. Now, I'm not super famous. I don't have an infomercial on late night TV yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. But the main thing is, my 15-year-old inner self is doing the thing he wanted to do. The person I've always been is finally now out in the world and is no longer remote controlled. One of my favorite quotes is from Helen Keller. Now, some of you here may know who she is, some of you may not. Helen Keller was born in the late 1800s. She was an author, she was a social activist, and she was a teacher. At a very young age, she contracted an illness which made her blind and deaf. And battling against that, she learned to read and write, and she learned to share her value with the world. She overcame the things that could have potentially remote controlled her. And this quote is one that I always go back to whenever I feel like I can't do something. I feel like the world's starting to control me in some way. Life is a daring adventure or nothing at all. And if a woman who had to struggle against all the odds can teach us one thing, I believe it's that. That inside of us is this daring ability. But at the same time, we all have some form of remote control. It might be the people around you who love you very much, but want to sort of coddle you and protect you from your dreams. It might be the distractions that are all around us that just convince you to stay passive. Or it might be the fear that you feel inside of yourself. But no matter what it is, there is a solution. And I learned it when I was five years old. My friends and I used to dare each other when we were five years old to eat dirt. <laughs> and then when we were 12 years old, we used to dare each other to ride down the hill on bikes really fast. And then when we were 15, we used to dare each other to talk to girls. <laughs> and that's what I realized. That's the secret. To become who you want to be, all you have to do is dare yourself. So as a 39-year-old man, I am here to give you a dare. I dare you to live a life of adventure. I dare you to break free of the remote control that you think holds you back. And most importantly, I dare you to be who you are. Thank you.